Welcome to Listen to Your Heart. I'm Bailey DeBarmore, and I'm a cardiovascular epidemiologist. Welcome. My name is Fawaz Alanezi. I'm a cardiologist interested in cardiovascular imaging and cardio-oncology. And today we will be talking about cardio-oncology. Cancer is not always the death sentence it used to be. Treatment has improved over the past years, which has improved survival. However, an increasingly concerning issue is the cardiotoxic effect of cancer treatments. That is, cancer treatments cause damage to your heart, and with increased long-term survival, there is increased risk of heart failure and other cardiovascular conditions. As the population of cancer survivors grow, it's important for general practitioners, oncologists, and cardiologists to be aware of cardiac complications following cancer treatment. Fawaz, how do cardiotoxic medications damage the heart? Well, this is a one million question. So conventional chemotherapy treatment can damage the heart muscle itself, leading to heart failure, structural damage, arrhythmias, ischemias, and pericarditis. This damage is referred to cardiotoxicity. Are there different types of cardiotoxicity? Yes, there are. Different types of cancers treating agents cause different type of heart damage. There are almost four categories for cardiotoxicity. And the first group include alkylating agents, anthracyclines, interferon alpha and monoclonal antibodies, and tyrosine kinase inhibitors. These medications can lead to direct cytotoxic effects on cardiac function. The second, the second group includes antitumors and antib antibiotics, fluorouracil, tobamyorase inhibitors, which can lead to cardiac ischemia. The third group can lead to more cardiac arrhythmias, and mostly due to ischemia from anthracyclines. The final group and the fourth group is pleomycin, cyclophosphamide, which can also increase the risk for pericarditis. For years, there was no universal definition of cardiotoxicity. A generally agreed upon system classifies heart damage by left ventricular ejection fraction, or heart failure symptoms. It's difficult to estimate the incidence of cardiotoxicity due to awareness, that is, are we measuring it, as well as the number of factors that can increase the risk, such as age, cumulative dose, and other risk factors like smoking or excess weight. Knowing the extent of cardiotoxicity in the cancer survival ship population is difficult. Cardiotoxicity can be acute within a week of treatment, but reversible, or it really can take much time and can happen after months or years after completing treatment. All types of clinician. If you are seeing a patient undergoing cancer treatment or with a history of cancer, please it's important to pay attention to their cardiac health. Oncologists, your patients should undergo cardiac function monitoring before starting treatment and every three months during treatment. Additional symptoms should be examined 12 to 18 months after initiating treatment. Having a pharmacist on the team allows for dose adjustment when you do see cardiotoxic symptoms. Yeah. Other heart disease risk factors should be also addressed with cancer patients. It is stressful time in the patient's life, but addressing all aspects of their health, including mental health and cardiac health, are important in the thinking about their health after treatment. Patients, ask about your blood pressure and blood lipids, how to quit smoking, and what other lifestyle changes you can make to reduce your risk of heart disease later on. So, cardio-oncology is really a growing field of research. If you conduct cardiovascular research, consider including assessment of previous cancer treatment to address multiple causes of heart disease. If you've received cancer treatment in the past, talk to your doctor about your risk of heart disease and what you can do. Cardiologists, primary care doctors, and oncologists need to work together to provide team-based care. Thanks, Bailey. Thanks for, for watching. Join us next time to talk about cardiovascular imaging.